A party in crisis. Rahul Gandhi quits as leader of India's main opposition following a heavy election defeat. Is this the end of the dynasty that's dominated the country's politics for generations? And can the fractured Congress party survive? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Deri Nabugeda. Mention politics in India and the name Gandhi would almost certainly come up. The family has been at the center of public life for decades. But the latest member of the Gandhi dynasty is looking to step away from the spotlight. Rahul Gandhi has resigned as leader of the main opposition party, the Indian National Congress. The 49-year-old took responsibility for big losses in this year's general election against the BJP of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Gandhi called for the Congress to make hard decisions to rebuild the party, saying he does not support Modi's vision for India. He put in uh, enormous effort, enormous effort. And I believe that there was a point at which we all felt that he had got the pulse and uh, that we would, we, would be, uh, uh, we would see a major coming back of the Congress. It didn't happen. Uh, we are all obviously disheartened. But uh, it is sad that he feels so strongly about leaving. We felt very strongly that he shouldn't leave. So the Congress party was founded in 1885 and played a leading role in India's independence from Britain in 1947. Since then, the party has formed most of India's governments. The Gandhi family has led the Congress for four generations. In 2014, the party suffered a major electoral defeat when Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP won 92% of the seats in the lower house. Rahul took over the party's leadership from his mother Sonia in 2017 and has long sought to become prime minister just like his father, grandmother and great-grandfather. But the Congress suffered a second major loss in this year's general election. Critics blame the defeat on corruption scandals and a lack of vision. Let's bring in our guests who are joining us from New Delhi. We have Sriram Chalia. He's a professor and dean of the Jindal School of International Affairs. Vidya Subrahamanyam is a journalist and senior fellow at the Hindu Center for Politics and Public Policy. And rounding out our panel is Manindra Nathakur, an associate professor at the Center for Political Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Welcome uh, to you all to Inside uh, Story. Narendra, if I may start um, with you. Uh, Rahul Gandhi, he had been talking uh, of quitting since the results of the elections were announced in May. Party officials at the time urging him to stay. But now he's officially resigned on Twitter, posting his resignation letter. Uh, what do you make of it? I think he's taking a right kind of decision. You know, this is a kind of assertion of moral authority, the moral minimum within the party. The party for long remained a ruling party and... There has been certain kind of problems inside. So Rahul's this decision will motivate younger people to get into politics and also help them in getting the right kind of position in the party. If Rahul takes up the problem more straightforwardly, he would rather go to the people instead of being all the time in the focus of the camera. And I'm sure that this kind of action will generate a kind of sympathy towards him all over the country. Already in the last election, he did very well. His graph, popularity graph, really grew very high. And this accident will bring home the point that Rahul Gandhi is not merely for ruling the country or being the president of the party, but for reviving the party, the, the, such, a, such a powerful party that used to be, has declined to this level. So it's a kind of moral assertion of the moral authority that Rahul is giving, doing. And I find it very, very interesting and powerful. Uh, Vidya, do you agree with that assessment and that uh, people now will be sympathizing with uh, Rahul Gandhi? In your opinion, how significant is his resignation in the context of the state of Indian politics right now? Um, I think in India, and the Indian people have had a lot of respect always for uh, renunciation. I mean, the minute anyone 
renounces their position they kind of become uh, they 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 become they, they they get onto a pedestal and uh, then you know people look up to them the same thing happened with sonia gandhi sonia gandhi uh, had an opportunity to become prime minister which she turned down and when that happened people were hysterical and most of the congressmen but even others I mean, she gained enormous respect from that because with that she established that she is not after power uh, and i think uh, rahul gandhi is doing something very similar in the sense that although he he doesn't have a victory to uh, renounce but but he's moving away it's not often that a political party leader uh, will voluntarily step away if you if i can give you the example of what happened with the bjp uh, the bjp was out of power for 10 years between 2004 and 2014 and at that time in fact uh, it might seem incredible at this point looking at uh, what happened at that uh, at that then those 10 years but the bjp did very very badly and uh, probably not as badly as the congress but uh, at one point it seemed as if the, the bjp wasn't going to recover from that defeat but its leaders did not step down they did not step away and uh, lk advani who was the leader of uh, who led the party to defeat to spectacular defeat in 2009 had to be literally carried away screaming and kicking and screaming so this is the kind of politics we have in india where uh, no matter what happens how many times they are defeated politicians aren't going to give up their uh, posts so to 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 from so so when you look at it uh, look at someone voluntarily leaving uh, it 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 is probably the first time that it has happened in uh, many many years I okay. mean, the last one yeah. we'll talk about what this means for the party in just a moment but first uh, sri ram your initial thoughts on on uh, gandhi's resignation and uh, what this means for him well darin uh, i must say that uh, voluntary leaving is simply uh, on paper because even in 2004 when uh, rahul gandhi's mother sonia gandhi quote unquote sacrificed the prime ministerial position she was still the you know the puppeteer behind the scenes and dr manmohan singh who was a prime minister from 2004 to 2014 was pretty much taking his orders from sonia gandhi so the same i am afraid is going to repeat here because even though rahul gandhi is formally stepping aside he has to because you know they have suffered a major debacle and it would uh, look like uh, he is uh, too thick skinned if he is at least not uh, putting in his papers as the congress party president but that's that aside i i fear that the culture of psychophancy and the personality cult and the dynasty you know and the notion that anybody from the nehru family uh, is enough for us uh, to be our leader that is so pervasive in the congress party uh, that i think uh, he will continue to run it from behind the scenes and in fact if he could not reform the party in the last uh, several years he and his mother if they couldn't turn it around and give it a winning uh, edge then how can they do it outside uh, uh, office so i think it shows the quandary they are in uh, on one hand they want to show that they are accountable and that this is not a kind of a um, hereditary monarchy but on the other hand they are really struggling to really rev up the party the party is broken at the grassroots so sri ram when you when when in his resignation peace. letter the uh, gandhi did say rebuilding the party requires hard decisions and it is important for someone new uh, to lead our party Uh, you don't agree that that is the path he's going to follow darin i think this someone new is going to be a loyalist of the uh, nehru family the nehru gandhi family they will never accept a, a true outsider remember i'll go back in history 1991 there was a prime minister called narasimha rao he was one of the few people who was not a psychophant of the gandhi family who had become the congress party president and believe me in 5 years they undermined him so much from within the party that they brought they dragged him down so i think it's impossible for them to let go the finances of the party the treasury is in the hands of the nehru family and they will continue to be you know using this like a puppet show from behind the scenes okay, so i'm afraid that this does not happen manindra uh, he may have quit his position uh, rahul gandhi but do you believe that he and his family are willing to let go of power sri ram doesn't seem to think so very nice thing that Uh, you know even if it is a dynasty policy a dynasty politics one has to remember that every time the person who became powerful had to undergo a severe test see indira gandhi was defeated badly after emergency she went back to the people won the confidence of the people and could come back to the power similarly i think congress had 
faced such kind of problems several times. And Rahul Gandhi, for this time, I think, is at the bottom. Congress party is at the bottom. And therefore, if somebody is sacrificing his, his position to build up the party, I'm sure it will work. It should work. I don't think it's a matter of psychophancy. I think the family has suffered a lot. And people remember the suffering. Two of their members were killed by the militants to remain to, to keep India intact. So this is something that people do remember. I, I think there is a need to have very uh, independent analysis of what is going on in the party. My hunch is that Rahul Gandhi's, Gandhi's availability to the people, common masses, will revive the party and revive the youngsters in the party to take more interest. I guess this is a right kind of thing that he is deciding. I think building power from back may not be really the case this time. This time, there is nothing to really govern. It has to be built up afresh. I don't know about the finances, if party uh, is keeping the finances with the Nehru family. I have no idea. But one can guess that after being twice outside the party, outside the power, party may not have enough resources this time. So now it's a real testing ground for the party and whether it can raise resources from the people or not. Vidya, if, right. Uh, Vidya, over to you. And if you uh, look at his statement in the letter, he wrote, it is a habit in India that the powerful cling to power. No one sacrifices power, but we will not defeat our opponents without sacrificing the desire for power and fighting a deeper ideological battle. When he talks to people clinging to power, who's he referring to here? So I think he's to, it's a general statement because uh, people do. It's very, very, very few people. I mean, hardly anyone ever leaves their position, even if they are defeated. There's always a hope that the next time he can come around and he can win. Uh, so therefore, what he means is probably he's talking in general about politicians. And also within his party, he's made it very clear that he expected, uh, you know, better responses. Uh, from his own party uh, satraps in the states, etc. And he was also trying to exert moral pressure by quitting. And I think he expects that this will act as a, some kind of pressure on the other, uh, uh, you know, state, le state level leaders and other significant leaders to follow suit and quit or, or do something drastic. Because if, I mean, what he's trying to say is that this is not the time to cling to power. This is the time for sacrifice, but I wish he hadn't used the word sacrifice. Sacrifice sounds as if uh, he's doing something that he shouldn't have done, or you know, he's doing something lofty and great. So, to so what that... extent then does this uh, video uh, throw the party into turmoil, or uh, does it really help in restructuring? See, the the problem here is, I mean, I was going to. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was interrupted the first uh, when I was, when I started speaking. I was I said that yes, it's very very rare for a politician in that position to resign and accept with a responsibility and say that you know I'm just I'm going to step away. But 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 the point I was going to make after that was that is he going to step away? If the what does he mean by saying that I'm I'm going to be available for advice? So now this is a very dangerous. Statement. Because when you say that I'm going to be available for advice, which means that uh, then you're creating a parallel power center. Let us assume that a new uh, president takes over and, and Rahul Gandhi is going to be available for consultation and advice. Uh, does he not become a, an alternative power center like the way his mother was, Sonia Gandhi was? Uh, even though there was a formal prime minister, Manmohan Singh, and because uh, she was a Gandhi, she became an alternative power center. So therefore, there is this dilemma. Does he, I mean, the one way out is for him to uh, quit all the decision-making bodies like the Congress Working Committee, and then actually go out and travel and connect with the people. That you have to connect with the people at an ide ideological level. He's been stressing the ideological uh, you know, gap between the irreconcilable gap between the Congress ideology and the BJP RSS ideology. Now, now this election has shown that the people probably are quite willing to buy the RSS ideology, and uh, so that how do you then bring people back to the Congress's ideals of secularism, inclusiveness, pluralism, respect for minorities, all that? How do you do that? How do you? Uh, so the only way you can do it 
is by traveling, by talking to get, but by being connected to the people. You can't just say that I will move away and I will not take part. I mean, I will be available for advice and sit in our office. I right. mean, we're not going to be able to do that. Okay, let's put this to Sri Ram. What do you think this means then for the National Congress? What state does it leave it in? Uh, Darin, I am afraid that uh, the Congress party is in a terminal decline. I don't see who could revive it uh, in any major way. Um, they have suffered two you know, significant blows in 2014 and again in 2019. Um, Vidya is right in the sense that they are unable to find the right ideological pitch uh, and the conviction of values and ideals with which they can win back power or even you know, do significantly better than last time. So uh, I think it's a long climb for them. I, the parallel that comes to my mind is the People's Party in Pakistan, uh, uh, which, is, which is a similar dynastic party that goes back a long way. And there was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, his daughter Benazir Bhutto. And now um, it's a pale shadow of its former self under the third generation of Bilawal Bhutto. And I fear that you know whether Rahul is formally there or is running it um, uh, uh, as a puppet master from behind the scenes, uh, he and his sister Priyanka, I'm afraid, lack the um, basic uh, leadership qualities that India is looking for. So the, if you look at it from the electorate's point of view, the Congress is not able to supply the kind of visionary leadership that they expect and that they're getting from Narendra Modi. So I think it's a tall ask for them. It, Rahul has been groomed in politics for nearly 15 years now. And uh, he, I'm afraid, personally lacks the coherence and the competence that people re expect in a national leader in a big country like India. You were mentioning so Narendra Modi just a moment ago. Uh, Suram, how do you think the BJP is looking into this? I think they'll be quietly pleased uh, that the Congress is in total disarray. Um, in fact, the joke is that, you know, they are going to miss their star campaigner, Rahul Gandhi, because uh, he was a liability for them in many ways. Uh, they had lampooned him as Papu, which is a kind of a slang for uh, someone who is uh, a fool. And uh, the public generally has bought that, um, you know, narrative that there is a high level of personal incompetence and inability of Rahul to even utter uh, a full speech in Hindi, which is the national language, which makes sense. So I think there are lots of liabilities that he brings to the table. So it's good in, in one way that he's stepping back, maybe good for democracy, good for us to have a better opposition. But uh, from the public point of view, when they look at it, they think this is just a revolving door and sooner or later they will again place the Gandhi, uh, some Gandhi back in power. Maybe they're going to find a placeholder for a few years. And then, you know, Rahul Gandhi is only 49. He has got age on his side. If nothing else, at least he has age. And, you know, sooner or later, his day might come and they may again bring him back. So this is a kind of a, you know, game or a gimmick, uh, as many people suspect. And I'm afraid that the sincerity that uh, one uh, looks for in a national party is missing. And that's why uh, they are struggling so much. Um, uh, Manindra, in his resignation letter, Gandhi did criticize uh, the ideology of the ruling BJP. And he said that every living cell in my body resists their idea of India. And then he went on to say that he will uh, fight uh, more, he, he wants to take on an ideological fight. He will engage in the ideological fight with the BJP and RSS with 10 times more vigor, he said, than he did during the last uh, 10 years. How do you see him doing that? You know, I think there's a terminal crisis for the Congress Party. Uh, 70 years back, the ideology that was marginalized by Congress, that is reviving back. Therefore, Congress, not only as a party, Congress as an idea will have to survive. And people within Congress will have to understand this. And I think Rahul Gandhi is one who is understanding this very well. Remember, this, this idea of having two centers of power is never new in Congress. Mahatma Gandhi himself used to be a center of power, and the whole cabinet used to go to see him. So somebody who has more legitimacy among the people, more, who is more connected with the people, has always been one of the centers of Congress. Same is with BJP. I'm sure that in BJP also the RSS chief is kind of admired by the BJP workers so much that he can always tell the prime minister not to do something or to do something. So such kind of uh, personality uh, who has more connection with the people and who can directly communicate to the people becomes powerful in the party. That remains there. If Gandhi emerges to that, if Rahul Gandhi actually earns that credibility, then I'm sure he will be able to revive the Congress. And I, I guess Congress is contemplating on that, but this is not only a struggle between two parties now. 
I think it is a struggle for idea of India. There were two ideas of India, and one was dominant for 70 years. The other is becoming dominant now. So between these two ideas of uh, these two ideas, there is a big struggle, and this is a struggle to the grassroots level. Congress just has to crystallize upon that. Congress has to just bring them together. You see that now the regional parties are going to the margins. Right. There is all possibility. People are looking towards Congress that it will emerge as the bigger party. The minorities in India, the oppressed section in India, they are all looking towards Congress. So it is all possible that Rahul Gandhi, through his these kind of acts and through his more serious efforts to connect with the people. But, we'll but let me put that point to Vidya, because Vidya, uh, clearly he has not been able to do that and connect with the people. And as a result, his party has suffered heavy electoral losses in India. What do you put down these setbacks to? Is it uh, the Gandhi power and leadership and dynasty, as some people call it? Or is the party doing something else that's clearly not working with the electorate? I mean, dynasty, uh, well, Congress is the, the largest, the biggest dynasty, He's the fifth generation Gandhi. But, but having said that, Indian politics is full of dynasties. Every state leader is a dynast, uh, barring a few. And so therefore, you know, within the BJP itself, there are more dynasties than probably there are in the Congress. So that's just one aspect of it. Uh, the fact that the people are seeing only Gandhi's may definitely was a was, was, was did make a difference, but I think you know what really happened is that Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, Narendra Modi particularly, Amit Shah, Amit Shah was the man who was doing, uh, you know, managing everything on the ground. But Narendra Modi had on his side, I mean, and Rahul Gandhi correctly pointed this out that he was fighting not just one uh, one party was just. He was fighting all the institutions uh, through the five years that these people were in power. They had they had completely all the institutions. They you know they they, they supported these institutions. Uh, and the, uh, towards the end, the election commission actually became indistinguishable from the BJP. I mean, it was doing exactly everything that the BJP wanted. And uh, the, and then the media. This is unprecedented. It has never happened before. Even during Indira Gandhi's time, the media wasn't this subservient. The media, barring, I think, one or two channels, completely, completely, 24 into 7, they were focused on Modi. And that kind of projection, you go to the rural areas, all you see is Modi. So in a way, this election was just Modi versus Modi. It wasn't Modi versus uh, Rahul Gandhi or anyone else. So, so the BJP, so the voters had only one choice, and that to pick Modi. He was there. I mean, they opened their eyes, they saw him. They, they, right. they opened their ears, they heard him. Right. So, right. You know, so therefore, it was an election where the, all the institutions, the media, plus Modi's charisma, they all worked together. And it wasn't that e it, it couldn't have been easy for anyone to fight this. Okay, and just final Gandhi, thoughts to Sri Ram. Uh, how does the Congress uh, renew itself going forward? Uh, I don't see um, a major, uh, you know, resuscitation. I think uh, they are in uh, terminal uh, illness, and uh, the party. Um, one should not, uh, you know, be surprised if it fragments and splits up into multiple uh, smaller parties. So that always happens when major parties uh, are in uh, long-term decline. Uh, I don't see this. Uh, so-called resignation of Rahul Gandhi as uh, anything uh, very significant that will transform it. I would rather be uh, skeptical and watch if uh, really there is a new generation that emerges from below. Uh, they can bring in more competent leaders uh, who could uh, potentially match up to Narendra Modi in the future. But at the present, uh, our uh, current prime minister fulfills most of the aspirations of the people of India. He has not monopolized uh, institutions. I don't agree with that view. The institutions have adapted to a very, very charismatic and magnetic uh, power center. And they know that the pulse of the public is with Modi. So this, I don't agree that everything is manipulated. Rather, the voice of the people has spoken in favor of Modi. And Rahul Gandhi, I think, has a lot of catching up to do on the Congress party after Rahul Gandhi and after the Gandhi dynasty, hopefully, will have a second avatar. I don't see it happening right now. But, you know, churning in politics happens. New forces emerge and contend with the old forces. And eventually, right. we will see light and we will have a genuine democracy with a clear opposition. Right now, it's Modi all the way. Okay, we'll leave it there. On that note, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, to my guest, Sriram Chaulia, uh, Vidya Subrahmanyam, and Manindra Nathakur.
Thanks for joining us from New Delhi and thank you for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you can go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Insight Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Insight Story. For myself and the whole team here in Doha, goodbye for now.